morning and happy Easter. I welcome you today to Ormond Beach Presbyterian Church on this Easter Sunday. My name is Mike Foley. I'm the senior pastor of Ormond Beach Presbyterian Church. On behalf of our entire worship team today that is helping to produce this Easter message for you, I welcome you and I'm glad that you've joined us and I wish you were here in person, that we are all together to be able to celebrate Easter 
but the events of our world today prevent us from being together. But somehow by the Holy Spirit, our hearts are joined together even though we are in different places. So I wanna just kind of take a moment with uh, families and children that are gathered perhaps in their homes who are watching this Easter message and to ask you to think about the ways you can celebrate Easter today in your home with your families. Even though we're not together here, we can still say to each other in our homes, the thing that we would say to each other here in the church, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. We can tell each other on this Easter day that we love you and we thank you because God loves us in Jesus Christ and has given us love. I hope you will say that to each other, that God loves you and that God has given his love for you in Jesus Christ. I hope you will also find ways to celebrate Easter by doing something for someone special in your home. What a great way for us to celebrate the Easter promise by doing special things for each other that say, this is how much I love you and God loves you. I want to do this special thing for you. And so I invite you now to join in this Easter worship and uh, follow along as we sing, as we pray, and as we hear the good news spoken from the gospel. to pray. We pray in words. We pray in song. Sometimes we pray with sighs that are too deep for even words. We pray in different places, in the sanctuary, in our homes, in the car, or on the sidewalk as we are walking the dog. 
Wherever we are and however we are ready to pray, God is always ready to hear us. God welcomes us with open arms. So now, wherever you are and however you are comfortable doing so, let us pray. Loving God, we come to you with Easter joy this morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We celebrate and give thanks for the gift of our Savior. May his life and his love and his resurrection touch all our hearts and all the world. We pray this morning for our community, remembering all who are overwhelmed or who are lost. We pray for parents who are struggling to figure out how to make the day-to-day -day of online schooling work. We pray for teachers and for school administrators, for everyone who is working so hard to provide a community for our children. We pray for our children who do not quite know how to make things work and for whom so much is different right now. May your strength be their foundation. We pray also for those who feel alone, who feel isolated. Reach out to them with your love, that they may know they are important and a part of the community. We pray for our nation this day, O oh God, praying for your healing to be with all who are ill. We pray for our health care workers, and for those who are doing absolutely essential work in this battle against the illness. We pray for those who work to provide for us and for those who keep us safe, for first responders and for our soldiers, wherever they may be. May they know your strength and our gratitude. We pray for the world May your spirit blow through every corner, bringing us together and uniting us in you. And send us out this day, O oh God, whether it is to stick our heads out the door, to step onto our driveway, or to electronically post something. Send us out to proclaim the Easter joy. Help us this day and every day to declare the good news of Jesus Christ. We lift our prayers in his name this morning, and I invite everyone, wherever they are, to join us now as we pray, as he taught us, saying together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 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 I'm reading today from the Gospel of Mark. It's the 16th chapter. Hear now the good news of Easter joy, which comes to us from the words of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. 
But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told him, told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. You know, the three women who were going to the tomb of Jesus on that first day of the week knew that Jesus was dead. After his body had been taken down from the cross, they had followed the burial procession, led by Joseph of Arimathea, to the tomb where they laid Jesus' body, and then they watched as a huge stone was rolled in front of the entrance to the tomb. They had loved Jesus and had watched him die. His teaching and preaching and acts of compassion had given them hope, and then they had watched the object of their hope crucified. They had experienced unconditional love like they had never known before, and they dared to believe that this love, God's love, would never die. But it had died. Life and hope and love, they all died. They were all sealed away behind that unmovable stone. For just a minute, I want you to imagine, if you can, what that stone represents for these three women who came to the tomb early on that Sunday morning. For Mary, the mother of Jesus, that stone was confirmation of the fear that had haunted her from the very first day that she held Jesus in her arms, that one day she would have to let him go. She remembered that soon after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, wise men from the east came bearing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. She understood the gold and frankincense. After all, Jesus was a king. But why the myrrh? Myrrh is a spice used for embalming and burying. Now she was carrying myrrh to anoint her son's body. For Mary Magdalene, the stone represented the end of a friendship unlike any friendship she had ever known. She had met Jesus at the absolute lowest, most tormented time in her life. Before Jesus came along, Mary's life was a living hell. She was possessed by seven demons. Jesus saw in her a person of worth beyond the torment. Jesus believed that in her mess was a message of hope for others. And so he cast the demons out, he set her free, and he invited her to follow him. Now standing at the tomb, her eyes filled with tears, she had to wonder what message she was to proclaim now. And what about Salome? the mother of James and John. She had watched her sons leave their father Zebedee in the family fishing business to go and follow Jesus. For a moment, she had even sensed that he was destined for glory. And so she appro boldly approached Jesus and asked that he would permit her sons, James and John, to sit at his right and left hand in glory. On Friday, all hopes faded, and now her sons 
were hiding in fear that what happened to Jesus would happen to them as well. Getting up early to anoint Jesus' body with the spices was for them a way of preserving this wonderful memory that they had of keeping alive something and someone they couldn't accept was really dead. It was their way of honoring a life that they would never forget. However, the question that burned in their minds and hearts was who will roll away this massive stone of grief and sadness and despair? What does the stone represent to you? What is standing heavy and unshakable and unmovable between you and life, between you and love, between you and healing, between you and God? For many of us, it is a frightening virus that seems to be getting worse, is causing more sickness and death, and we wonder to ourselves, who is going to roll away this stone that seems to be in front of our life? For some, it is the fear associated with being out of work again, with no income, we may be worrying what we are going to do, who is going to come and save us. Or perhaps you are just feeling powerless in the face of that massive stone of sadness and suffering, of death and despair, and you find yourself wondering, if there is anyone and anything that can roll away the stone in front of our life. This morning, I hope you will consider that the good news of Easter is not only good news for Jesus, who rose on that day, and for the women who came to the tomb long ago. I pray that you may be open enough to consider the possibility that this is good news for you and that even today God is actively rolling away the stone of death and sickness and despair and is calling us to walk into the light of day. The good news of Easter is that God in the dark of the night rolled the stone of death aside and raised Jesus from death to life, and that those who put their faith and trust in him will be raised with him from death to life eternal. The good news of Easter is that God rolled the stone aside and the suffering and the shame that Jesus endured is not the final chapter in the story of Jesus' life or of our life. In the resurrection, God has written a new chapter, the beginning of a new story, and we are invited to walk into that story. It begins by acknowledging that we are saved not because of anything we have done or not done. No, we are saved because we are part of that new story. And because of God's grace for us in Jesus Christ, we have good news to tell in our life as well. And if you want to know how much God loves you, look at the outstretched arms of Jesus. That's how much God loves you. The good news of Easter is that God rolled the stone aside and Jesus, who was judged, rejected, and buried in disgrace, has been raised up to the right hand of God, that is, to the place of honor and power, 
and that those who know what it is to be judged and rejected have a friend in heaven who knows our pain and who intercedes for us before God the Father. The good news of Easter is that you may show up this morning feeling discouraged and beaten up by the pain of life and its disappointments, but you will not go home the same. When God rolls the stone away, we are changed by the risen Christ. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was changed Mary became a powerful witness and encourager in the early church, reminding people again and again that the one she first knew as her son was the Son of God with us and for us. And Mary Magdalene was changed. She would be the first witness to the resurrection. She would be the one who ran from the tomb and told Peter, and John and the other disciples that Jesus had risen and that he would see them again in Galilee. And yes, Salome was changed. Her sons would live for Christ and they would die for Christ and they would be with Christ in glory. Well, the same is true for us who live for Christ and follow the pattern of his life and his love. One day, we also will take our place at his table in the kingdom of God. But for now, we have a story to tell. It's a story of how God has changed our life when Christ came into our life and led us from this place to all the places he wants to show us, to the places where joy springs up in the morning. A few years ago, I found this poem that still speaks to me about the good news of Easter. I rolled the stone in front of my heart and hung out a sign that said, keep out. Then God, my father, spoke one spring morning through brilliant sunshine saying, that stone has got to go. I asked why. God said, because, because it's Easter and Jesus has left Joseph's tomb and he is headed toward yours. My prayer for you this Easter morning is that you will ask God to roll away the stone that may be standing between you and love, between you and life, between you and and the very important purpose that God has for your life. I say to you, on behalf of all of those in this church, that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, and that is the gift that God gives to us on this Easter day, a gift that reminds us that nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
behalf of the entire congregation, I want to thank you for each and every gift that you give to Christ and to this church that supports our ministry. Even this week, we have been seeing uh, gifts come into the church office through the mail or on our website. If you go online, you'll see the online opportunity to give a gift to the church to support this ministry. We are alive because of your love and we are reaching out to continue the work even in this difficult time. And so I thank you and I encourage you as you were able to give your gifts, knowing that we will soon be through this difficult time and we will be back together in the sanctuary to rejoice. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift that you've given to us. You gave us life in your name. And because of your love, we are able to give our life and our, and our gifts to you. Receive and welcome our gifts. Use them for your purpose wherever it is you send them. But we pray always, as you have generously, joyfully poured out yourself for us, receive the outpouring of our hearts and and our gifts for your purpose. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. If you were here, I would say again to you those words, Christ is risen, and you would respond back. He is risen indeed. And I hope that that is what you will do even now in your home. That you will say to those who are worshiping with you in your home, that someone would say, Christ is risen, and the others would respond, he is risen indeed. And if you're all alone in your home, I hope you will go out the door and that you will shout to your neighbors on your street that Christ is risen and that they will wonder what this good news is that makes us shout for joy. But I'm asking you, and I'm hoping that in your home, in your hearts, the good news of Easter will sound aloud and that we will look forward to the day when we are together in the sanctuary again to celebrate our good news that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.